almost ready yet, Jeff? Hmm? Are you almost ready? I'm ready. I'm just waiting for people to come. Okay. Hey, John. We're not quite ready. Okay. Hello. Hi, Matt. How you doing? Living a dream. John looks like he's in a sunny place. There's a, there's two Lodigers, yeah. Not yet. I will. I mean, on the iPad. I will. I'm upside down. Margaret is joining us, correct, Jeff? That is correct. Yes. sat outside for the better part of the weekend in the wind. That voice, Mr. Schoberg. Where'd that come from? That came from Melissa. Oh, that's still <laughs> aren't showing on my screen. Right, I'm, I'm guessing you were fishing. If you can call it that. <laughs> Not catching. Sitting in a cold boat. No, on, on, on a cold fur line by a smoky fire. Oh, well, it's 6 o'clock. Six o'clock, let's get the meeting started. I have to take mine off, hey Jeff. Just shut the volume down. Okay. Right. Go ahead, Bill. Okay, so let's stand for the first place. Can you turn that up at all, Jeff? I can't hear anything over here. Okay. Yeah, but I will. Hang on. Pledge allegiance 
to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, 3.0. Can I get a uh, roll call vote, please, Kelly? Yes. Director. Director Sorkin? Here. Director Gentilini? He is not present. Thank you. Director Yudam? Here. Director Schoberg? Here. Director Lodiger? Here. And Director Sather's here. Director Addy's here too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Director Addy. Here. Thank you. Uh, 4.0 agenda additions and deletions. Jeff, do we have any? Um, we were going to do an update. Uh, Margaret was going to give us an update on the on our current legal situation. Okay. All right. That would become uh, 11.5. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Any other agenda, agenda additions and deletions? No. Okay. Uh, 5.0, visitor input. Jeff, do you have any? Would you sign up for visitor input? Um, Mr. Chair, we don't have any visitor input. However, we do have a number of Franklin teachers that would like to address the board as far as the administrative structure with me leaving. So I don't know if you want them to speak now or if you want to wait until that item comes up. When, where would that? Um, it's actually on 11.3. Uh, Eleven point nothing. I mean, I don't see eleven point one and two, three, three four. We added five. Three. Eleven point three. Eleven point three. Eleven point three. Okay. All right. So, how many how many people want to speak, Jeff? Well, I think it's probably a matter of they'd like to put their two cents in on. Franklin administration, so I, I don't, I think there's, uh, I think we lost Melissa, but we have Mrs. Bittman, Coapola, okay. and Lodiger, for sure, so three. Okay. Melissa's well, here. Okay, okay, well, I guess, I guess we'll just, well, let's put this on visitor input so we can stay on task, I guess, with the agenda, I guess. Okay, so mm -hmm. if you want to go ahead and have them speak now, let's go ahead. Um, Melissa, do you have anything you want to say? Um, I guess I don't have anything to say, but I just um, I, I am interested in how you're going to go ahead and decide on where we're going to go with the principal or a dean of students. I'm just I'm just here to listen. I'm not quite sure. I, I don't have anything to say at this time. Okay. Ms. Bittman? Same with me. Coapola? Okay. Beth, Beth, you're muted, or are you controlling that, Jeff? I'm not controlling that. She just froze up, so it looks like she's muted, but she said that she's... Oh, same with me. This is Coapola. Okay. All okay. right. Well, we're good, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. So who would like to speak next? That's all we have so far. So we can move on to uh, approving the agenda. Okay, so 6.0, uh, approve the agenda. I get a motion to approve, I get a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion with the um, one addition. I will second that. Any discussion? Can I get a roll call vote to approve the agenda, Kelly? Director Sadie. Yes. Yeah. Director Oh. 
Is that someone for a discussion? No. Okay. Director Gentilini is absent. Director Johans? Yes. Director Schober? Yes. Director Ladiger? That might not be your yes. worst option. And myself, Director Safe, there's a yes. Director Addy? Yes. And Director Sorkin? Director Sorkin? Yep. Uh, so you can join by oh, phone, I, I, I guess, I but I would leave and come back. And someone was speaking. Um, I got it. Was that, yeah, the I, agenda? Yes. Okay, so there was, what were the results of the, Kelly? Well, that doesn't help you to hear. Okay. That is six yeses and one absent. Yeah. Okay, all right. Move along to 7.0. Uh, approve the treasury report for the first month of April and for the first check writing of May. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, in your packet, do you see uh, for the month of April receipts totaling $1,045,461.13, uh, disbursements $717,231.78, and uh, payroll $717,457.42. Uh, checking balances, Miners Bank $1,794,722.27. First National Bank of Gilbert $2,064,801.87. For a total of three million eight hundred fifty nine thousand five hundred twenty four dollars and fourteen cents also first check your writing uh for the month of may you see uh disbursements totaling eighty four thousand three hundred sixty nine dollars and fifty eight cents can i get a motion to can i get a motion to approve the treasury report please i'll move director lauderger will and support by director Lauderger. Okay. Did you get that, Kelly? No. Who made the motion? You are. Director Yuhan. Thank you. And I have Director Lauderger supporting. Thank you. Okay. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Director Yuhan. Yes. Director Schoberg. Yes. Director Lauderger. Yes. Myself, Director Say there's a yes, Director Addy? Yes. Director Sorkin? Yes. And Director Benalini is absent. The Treasurer's report is approved. Okay, moving on to 8.0 consent agenda. Approve the A, approve the minutes of the regular meeting Monday, April 27th, 2020. B, approve the minutes of the study session Monday, April 27th, 2020. C, approve the minutes of the special meeting on Monday, April. 2020. I get a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move. Uh, I'll, I'll move approval, but I have a question about the April 27th study session. Okay. So you have a. Or, I'll support Polly's motion. Okay. April 27th. Okay. Uh, my question is, it says in there that um, reductions will have to be made and brought to the next board meeting for approval when we talked about the 7th through 12 of 1.2 F and K through 6 of two sections. Now, this is the next meeting. Yeah, we're not. Since that, buddy. We're, uh, we're going to wait till the last meeting in May. We, uh, we're going to wait till after the election to see where our budget's at, and that's going to have... One of the things I was going to talk about is we, we need to start obviously talking about the budget, but Tuesday will have a, a dramatic impact on that. So we'll, we'll start setting up those meetings after <coughs> Tuesday. Okay. And, and when is the deadline when we have to notify teachers that they're, they're on the line? June 1st. Right, June 1st. And untenured teachers? On tenure it, it's What's all the it's all June first. All June first. Okay, thanks. 
Okay, so can I get a mo Okay, so we got motion by Director Sorkin, support by Director Sather to approve the consent agenda. Any more discussion? Can I get a roll call vote, please? Director Colbert. Yes. Director Ladiger. Yes. Myself, uh, Director Sather is a yes. Director Audi. Yes. Director Sorkin. Yes. Director Gentilini is absent. Director Johan. Yes. The consent agenda is approved. 9.0. Move along. 9.0. Items removed from the consent agenda. There was none. 10.0 personnel. 11.1. .1, approved resignation of teacher. Uh, Mr. Howdy, this is a uh, request for resignation for. Jill Kinney, she's a special ed teacher in the Franklin for the last five years. Um, she's moving out of the area, I guess. Okay, 11.1. .1. Can I get a motion to approve the resignation of teacher? So moved. I, Director Ladiger, support. Any any discussion on this? None being had. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Director Lauder. Yes. Myself, Director Sather is a yes. Director Addy. Yes. Director Sorkin. Yes. Director Gentilini is absent. Director Yuhan. Yes. Director Schoberg. Yes. The uh, um, the resignations accepted. 11 point oh new business eleven point one discussion on non bargaining unit contracts. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have uh, we have uh, Margaret's back. That's what I was looking at. Um, <clears throat> we have. Uh, Three contracts left that uh, need to be negotiated, and they are all non-bargaining units. They're office personnel, and, and Mike Hogue would be the third. And these are, being that they aren't in a bargain, we can't have a closed session to discuss what you want to do. So I guess we need to do it here. We just need to open her up and, and talk about what direction you'd want to go. You want to have a meeting with them soon? Um, far as how much you want to give, those types of things. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, they are they are working on a contract that's a year old, right? Yes. Or not a year old, but it's it's expired. Yeah. Yes. Just as a point of reference, we gave most of our other employees three and two. The only exception to that would be the teacher unit. I think we did 3.5 and 2. And we, we did some insurance increases, and they vary across the board. So. Was there any request of what they were looking for at all, or each individual, or is that something you can share with us? Or I, I could share it. Um, I, I don't know that information yet. Um, okay. You guys could tell me that you want me to go talk to them first and and get that information and we can have a study session next week on this topic to review theirs if you want um, we're just trying to get going on this we need to get going on okay. it. i think i think it would be proper for you to talk to all of them and just see what they're looking for or whatever and just report back to us with what you with all that information and we'll have a study session on it okay, okay. Uh, how does how does the board feel about that? that? Why not have a negotiation session with the negotiating committee? We can do that too. I can set up a meeting if you want. I think that would be the way to go. I agree. Okay, very good. I'm in. I'm in. Got to start somewhere. Okay, I will uh, Monday today. I'll see what those folks have available toward the end of the week. We have to post it for three days. 
Probably next Monday. Does anyone, does anyone have a problem with Monday? It's Bill, Polly, and Brandy. On Monday, what uh, what time? The 18th, maybe, I don't know, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Yeah, that'll work. Well, what works for everybody? Is there any? Who's the alternate? Matt. I'll, I'll be available. Brandy? I'm available. Okay. At I'll, 3, you said? I'll set up 3 o'clock on Monday the 18th. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll, uh, moving along. Eleven point two update. Long distance learning. Update. Um, I'll let our principal start. Okay. All right. Hey, can everybody hear me? Okay. It's Mr. Rippentrog. I'm uh, having some internet issues. You're good. Thank you. <clears throat> Last week we did a survey and students, and we completed and um, it's helping us pave the way for the last two weeks. We took down the stretch. Um, I can just say I'm super impressed with with all the teachers um, and how they've really um, hit a home run right now with this online learning and this distance learning. Uh, very much appreciative of what they're doing with the kids. It's all new for everyone. Um, and it's it's just extremely uh, exciting to see some of the great things that's going on. No, it's not, but we are doing well um, when you schools around the state and so forth. So um, I just wanted to say that I uh, really appreciate the teacher's work. Angie, do you have anything to add? No, I don't have anything to add. Well, that was exciting. Um, I'll, yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll add two cents in. So we, <clears throat> Donald Franklin, we also, we sent a survey out, if you couldn't quite understand, Todd, all three of us sent surveys out to our parents and students. I didn't send one to my students um, for obvious reasons, K through four, but those guys did. Um, but I sent one to all the parents and we got a really good response back. Um, I had close to 200 responses and and basically the questions that we asked were, you know, how, how is your internet? Um, is the connection good? Are you able to connect? How are the times that we're having the Zoom meetings with your, with your students? Um, the amount of work, is it adequate? Is it overwhelming? Um, do you understand Schoology? Is that, are you struggling with that? And, and we had, we certainly had, um, a few folks that had internet issues that's not really a surprise um, we have even I mean we to the to all the families K through 12 that didn't have any connection we did like I said earlier we have purchased a, a hotspot through AT&T um, but depending on where you live that might not always be the greatest thing either um, just some alternatives we have we have uh, you know we have hotspots around the school if you wanted to drive in, that type of thing. So we, we're trying to provide um, opportunities so that students can at least participate. Um, most of the younger kids um, thought that the length of the Zoom meetings, because our, our teachers typically connect anywhere from, from an hour to two hours a day, direct contact, and, and they, they seem to like the time of the meeting and the length of the meeting, they thought that was adequate. And we didn't have a whole lot of complaints about the amount of work that was that was uh, required. Um, the one thing that we did hear a little bit of, and this is specifically in the lower elementary, was the program Schoology. That's our workflow app. That's how you know we pass assignments out and then we get them back through Schoology. And, and the younger kids, it is a little bit cumbersome for some of the, the little kids. Um, but they have been picking it up, and it wasn't too bad. But we have a good support team that's that's been helping out. So overall, I was very pleased with with how the results came back. I was a little bit nervous because um, obviously there's good plenty of frustration out there. I think a lot of people are getting distance learning fatigue. They're getting um, fatigue from being at home and, and everything else involved with it. But um, it, it's going well. Um, we certainly hope that. I was on a on a call this morning with the commissioner and and 
the superintendent group was pressing her for what's going to happen this summer uh, as far as uh, summer programs go and, and apparently by the end of the week they're going to have some guidance on that and and we certainly start talking about next fall and what that's going to look like and and nobody unfortunately nobody has exact answers right now because we don't know you know what turn this is going to take yet so we're playing it by ear on all of those things which is hard to plan but so anyway that's all i have mr chair unless anyone has any questions okay any any questions from the board members okay moving along 11.3 discuss the 2021 administrative structure okay mr chair we Obviously, with me being reassigned elsewhere, that uh, leaves a hole in the Franklin. We do have um, Nikki Young set to be the dean of students there yet, um, but there still needs to be some licensed administrator that oversees that building. So I, I've had this conversation with with Angie and Todd already, and and they have their thoughts and. I'm going to see if you guys have any of your thoughts and we'll try to hammer this out and do what we want to do. I think in the past, can I speak, Director yeah. Lodiger here? Yeah. I think in the past we've kind of, we've kind of gone over a variety of, of options from, um, you know, Angie taking on some of those principal duties at the elementary or Todd coming over and doing some. We've talked about hiring a, a principal and not having a dean of students. I think we've pretty much discussed all of them. So I, I'm, if, if the teachers did want to give their input, that would be great as well. I mean, we have discussed, a, like I said, a variety of options. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what the best thing to do is. What's your, what's your feedback, Jeff? Maybe if you can give your feedback and maybe the teachers, if Bill gives them permission to speak, maybe we can get some. Oh yeah, they can speak. Go ahead, Jeff. Well, I, I don't know. It, it's hard because they're in a transition right now. Obviously, we're moving into a new building in a couple of years, and you hate to upset the apple cart too much. Um, Nikki's obviously been there, and I guess that would be some point of stability. They're going to need some. I mean, we're we are changing. <coughs> A lot of the things we're doing and, and there is going to need to be some leadership there to, to guide that um, certainly the teacher group themselves are are uh, very excited about that stuff and and, and will do some self-directed activities but at the same time they still have a day job to take care of too so we there's a lot of planning that needs to go so i i don't know i i can tell you what todd and andrew are going to ask you to do is hire another principal i don't from a superintendent standpoint, I mean, obviously that, or a leadership point, that would be ideal. From a budget point, I don't know that we have that money. In fact, I can tell you that we don't have that money, unless you wanted to dive into the bank account. But so I, I, I those are my thoughts. I guess I don't know. I, I, I would hesitate to volunteer up Todd or Angie. Um, knowing what having that extra responsibility feels like for the last five years but it's going to be a tough decision for you how about that any other board members have anything else to say i mean i would i would like to see possibly asking angie or todd to see if they'd be willing to take on that position for a short time, you know, as in like a traveling principal. 
I know that we have talked about that as well. Um, but I see that there's some input being given that um, elementary school teachers are feeling like a full-time principal is what they would like to see happen. I saw that. What, I saw that. So this is Director Sather. I'm, so we were, and I know it's being explored and it's going to be after the vote to see kind of where we're sitting at for our budget as far as that 1.2 positions that we were looking at, what would that mean if we did a interim principal position for, do we have anyone who has um, the credentials to be able to do an interim principal position? Because it's, it's so hard because we know that it, there's potential for it to just be temporary and short term. Um, but I also hate to stretch our current principles are right now because all I, I and I spoke about it last week. All I see is that big old long list of everything that has to get done, and you know, in preparation for not even the academy's model, but the new new buildings. And I mean, it's it's a lot. So I get a little worried on asking them to look at that versus if we can maybe move into an interim position and it might not be the full, what we would normally hire out for a full principal that we would be employing. So I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Mr. Carey. Well, when you're, you're talking about, I mean, it's, it's a budgetary decision that you're, I mean, would I, from an administrative standpoint, would I support doing that? Absolutely. I mean, that would be ideal, but. So if what, if what I'm hearing from you is correct, you're thinking we should wait a little bit to see the results of tomorrow and um, take a look at the budget and figure out what's, what we have to work with for a full-time, possibly interim, Principal. And that, yes, and we are under a little time crunch, though. And uh, I mean, we can certainly start. The, I wanted to start the discussion tonight, but there's going to have to be quite a few meetings, or at least a second meeting set up, like within a week here on this topic. So uh, can I say something, um, speaking opt optimistically about the vote tomorrow, um, you know, by next year we could be one district, so we maybe have more people that we can, instead of just Todd and Angie, maybe there's a Virginia principal that could maybe uh, share the duties. I mean, you're under, you're under one, hopefully one uh, district next fall. And, and that, that being said, also, I mean, if, the vote goes the the other way where 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 we aren't. Um, if we were to look at a full time principal, then um, Nikki would be teaching again, correct? Well, and there's another part of the equation because. We can't force her to go back into the classroom anymore. She can volunteer to. But we can't tell her. At this point, that timeline has passed already. So we would, we're, we're committed to having her as a teacher on special assignment next year unless she tells us that she wants to go back to the classroom. That's why I wanted to take that action before. So we had some options. Now we're tied in. <clears throat> that was my suggestion. Now we're stuck. Well, I don't necessarily think we're stuck. I think it's just, it's the current situation that we have to find the solution. Um, can we schedule a time for our work session next week? Then can we get that scheduled? Well, we have, we're going to have a joint powers board meeting at 6 o'clock next Monday, so if we could do 4 o'clock 
on Monday, we'll have a negotiations at three. Can we do four? For study yeah. session? How about 4.30? 4.30 is fine. Works for me. 4.30 works for me as well. Melissa Lodiger, hey. Miss, Melissa Lodiger wanted to put uh, a couple cents in. Okay, I wasn't meaning to talk today, but listening, just listening to the conversation um, about kind of piecemealing a principle together for our building. We are a large building, and we have a lot of passionate teachers that are looking at moving forward into this new building within a couple of years. When you're looking for a principal, we would like somebody who's passionate in moving us forward in this new direction, because it is a new direction according to what most people have probably worked through. So when, when I hear the word interim principal maybe stepping in for a year, that's going to displace us two years back. So if you're going to hire somebody, hire somebody that can follow us through into this new new school year um, and this new building and this new state of curriculum rather than having to always put us on hold. So you have to keep in mind, there's a new level of teaching that's coming in that yes, us teachers can can be inventive and creative, but we would also like that leading force leading us through that. So I just want you to keep in mind, we sharing principles is not easy. We all know that our district has done that in the past and it hasn't been the easiest. Even if you pull somebody from Virginia in to be part of our principalship, that's going to be even harder than even having somebody within our building. So just keep that in mind as you're you're going forward with the process. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I don't see that there's a problem um, of in two years because we have a need for a principal now. In two years when the building is built or whenever it's built, you're gonna need, the. it's gonna be a different building, but it's still going to be an elementary building. So you need a principal now and you need a principal in the future. So I don't see that two years makes any difference if you're going to fill that building with a principal and a new building. So well, actually, I think Beth, actually, the actually, so. Beth wanted to speak to, did Go you ahead, want Beth. to say something, Beth? You know, and I, I don't want to stir the pot either. And I wasn't sure that I even wanted to speak tonight, but as long as I'm here and we're discussing um, just some thoughts from a teacher perspective, again, you know, um, Nikki does a great job. However, her abilities are limited when we have a student who maybe um, needs to be suspended or something like that, then she would then need to go to whoever is the interim or Angie or whatever. And my goodness, I can't imagine what Angie has on her plate already over there at the high school. Um, I'm just not seeing as that being fair to Nikki or Angie. Um, and, you know, it's not a small building. You know, we have, what, four, four or 500 kids there and to not have a principal right on site is going to be a big challenge. You know, like Melissa said, I think piecing something together, that's going to be really, it's going to be difficult. And I think we're going to have some teachers who are, you know, not happy about it. But if that's the way it is, um, you know, we have a good staff at the Franklin, they'll work through it too. But what I'm hearing is we're hoping for a permanent principal. I, I think the numbers you're, you're referring to as students is probably more in the 290. Oh, versus I'm sorry. 40. I'm still thinking K-6. Yeah. Okay. I wish it was a K-6. It, you know, and that always bothered me why we have these three separate entities as a, as a, K, a K-4 and then a 5-8 and then a 9-12. It created this, that whole scenario created this three principal thing, but that's water under the bridge right now. But I do believe that if you delegate those, and I know that principals probably don't want to hear it, but I don't want to see our principals come bump, getting bumped when the new elementary opens up. You know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. I mean, I would see, I would rather see them share that versus in two years down the road, they're out of a job because we don't have no use for one, one right. of them. And there's no easy answer. And I'm just speaking 
you know, personally from a selfish point of view too. So mm-hmm. I get it. I get it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I that's will, just my that's just my comment. I will set up a meeting for four thirty on Monday. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Beth. Thanks for your input, guys. Thanks yeah, for that. Thank you all. Thank Gals. You. Okay. Are we done having a discussion on that? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll reconvene that conversation on Monday. Yeah. All righty, 11.4, an update on the 2020 graduation. This would be Mrs. Williams. Yes, this would be. Um, I have topic. had a meeting. <laughs> yes. I had a meeting um, today, actually, at 11 o'clock. This is our second meeting that we had with our senior class advisor, Donna Walls. Um, Laura Tassoni and a group of parents and then our senior class advisors are also invited to this meeting so we've had two of them to do some planning and we don't have it all the little tiny details but we do have some things set Um, we are looking at having a parade on the day of graduation and having the kids go through the towns and the communities ending up um, getting their diploma curbside in the high, at the high school. And then uh, prior to that, uh, next week, next week, 21st and the 22nd. 21st and the 22nd, we're planning um, for our 70 seniors to come into the gymnasium with the stage all decorated for graduation. Um, to walk across the stage with a a small number of family members with them and we're going to have it being filmed by a videographer and we will piecemeal all the students going across the stage in a video and that video will be displayed then um, on channel 12 um, the facebook live whatever wherever we can else we can display it on graduation night after the parade the time was picked um like 8 30 at night it would be displayed on channel 12 the video of all the kids going across the stage getting their diploma moving their tassel on their cap throwing their cap up our guest speakers would be videotaped um our senior class the two seniors that speak will be videotaped so that's kind of the route we're going right now we just have to work out the details Any other discussion on that? Thanks, Angie. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Moving along, 11.5. I didn't write it down, but it was a legal issue, a legal something. Yeah, Margaret was going to give us an update as best she can, whatever she can tell us about uh, that situation. Go ahead, Margaret. All right, so um, sorry for my previous technological difficulties. I guess you could hear me, sorry about that. Uh, So Eveleth Gilbert has been served with a lawsuit. It's a lawsuit from the East Range Academy of Technology and Science, ERATS. Um, They served both a complaint and a temporary restraining order. And it's against Virginia, Eveleth Gilbert and the Joint Powers Board. Uh, ERATS alleges that it has a lease with Virginia and the Virginia School District um, provides access to a bus garage, which I'm sure you're all aware of already. Um, The bus garage is situated where the new high school is going to be. And the Joint Powers Board uh, took a vote in April to either sell or demolish the bus garage. As a result of that vote, ERATS has now sued the two school districts and the Joint Powers Board. Hey, Margaret. Yeah. Excuse me, Margaret. I just interrupted you. You said sure. we are all aware of that. What do you? What can you? Can you? Can you tell us what you mean that we are all aware of that? Because Director Gentilini was served papers on. May 5th and the board has yet, or the school district has yet to see those papers. We haven't seen them. 
Okay. Okay. I think she. I think she was referring to the bus garage. <laughs> yeah, I was referring to the fact that the bus garage sits in the middle of where the new high school is going to be. Okay. So, but the but the law but the lawsuit against the district. I think the majority of the board who get the paper, which I don't, seen the lawsuit on in the paper the next day. When okay, are we going so, to? When will the board get copies? Um, Tom has the copy. Yeah. Tom, Director Gentilini has a copy. So can you can you elaborate on that, Margaret? Sure. Because so I've discussed to, this with you. Yeah. So to initiate a lawsuit against a school district, you have to serve a school board member. It doesn't matter who that board member is. You just have to serve a school board member. So in this mm -hmm. case, Tom was the board member that was um, selected to be served with a copy of the lawsuit. I don't know if he believed that that lawsuit was against him or if he didn't understand, but that lawsuit is actually against the school district. And so when you receive a lawsuit like that, what you should do with it is give it to the superintendent. So the superintendent can both um, determine the timeline because you have a legal requirement within a certain number of days to take action based upon that lawsuit. And if you know, if the school board member doesn't tell the superintendent or the board about it, then you, you know, in worst case scenario, it could be a default judgment against the school district. Um, yeah, and so Tom has been calling. I have a copy of the complaint and the temporary restraining order because I um, learned of it and I contacted the attorney who is suing uh, the three entities and, and I have a copy of it. And so I have been corresponding on your behalf with that attorney uh, and, and he sent me a letter today uh, kind of indicating where, what the basis for his lawsuit was. And I responded back to him today that uh, there does not appear to be any viable claim against Eveleth Gilbert. So the lease at issue here is with Virginia. And so ERATS is saying the lease that they have with Virginia has been violated. That's a claim against Virginia. ERATS is claiming that the Joint Powers Board took action that interfered with their lease. That action was a vote to either sell or destroy the bus garage that they have access to. That's a claim against the Joint Powers Board, which is a separate legal entity from Eveleth Gilbert. Uh, and the law says, and the Joint Powers Agreement says that actions by the Joint Powers Board can't be um, relate back to Eveleth Gilbert. Uh, likewise, actions by Virginia uh, can't cause a claim against Eveleth Gilbert. Ev actions of Eveleth Gilbert can't cause a claim against Virginia. So I just I don't believe that there's any viable claim. I'm hopeful that I can convince the attorney for ERATS of that. He seemed to be lumping them all together as if, you know, it's the Joint Powers Board was the same as Eveleth Gilbert. Although I, he knows that they're not because in his complaint, he says it's a separate legal entity. So he knows that. Margaret, two, I have two questions. Okay, sure. so you said that you have the... Um, you have the the lawsuit, the letter of whatever. So you got a copy of it. And so uh, I think we board members should have copies of that too sent to us. Sure. sure. Okay. And then the other thing about it um, being a no viable claim against Evelyn Gilbert, what, where does the joint representation agreement that the Joint Powers Board signed come into this? Because as I understand it, and if I had known, I would have pulled up my copy, but I don't. But pretty much it said that you were, uh, Evla Gilbert was going to be agreeing through the, you know, the three board members on our board and the three board members on their board agreed that we would um, share the costs and the liabilities. And that document talks about the eminent domain situation. And to me, I it seemed to me that that was encumbering Evelyn Gilbert by signing that extra joint representation agreement. And so maybe that's the tie in with us that I don't believe. And I've had conversations with some board member and 
bill about that. I don't think that ever should have been signed, that that, that encumbered us. So by statute, a joint powers board is a separate legal entity. And so um, it is as if it's, it's its own school district. And so the actions of that joint powers board, both pursuant to the language in the agreement and by statute, are not going to cause liability to Lilith Gilbert. And, and that's clear. And if the attorney will not agree to voluntarily dismiss it, we'll go to court and get it dismissed. And I'm, I'm very, I would be very surprised if the court allowed this case to go forward against Eveleth Gilbert. There's, there's just no claim against Eveleth Gilbert here. Are you going, are you saying then that the joint representation agreement that the joint powers board signed, that would implicate them, but not Eveleth Gilbert's school board and school district? So there's a separate claim against Virginia based upon the fact that they have, they are the ones that had the lease. Right. I understand that. Right. So there is a claim against Virginia and there's a claim against potentially against the joint powers board. They're going to say that the, the, uh, the joint powers board interfered with the lease between Virginia and ERATS. So that's, that's the claim. So, so Margaret, when you talk about, Polly says to get copies from all of us, for all of us. I mean, isn't it, wouldn't it be prudent that we receive that Tom turn over that copy to Jeff? Well, Tom can just keep the copy and then we can just all get copies, right? I mean, shouldn't Tom turn over the original copy signed for Margaret? Yeah. I mean, he should have turned over that copy. And I wish you were here because he keeps calling the attorney for ERATS. He keeps calling their office and he should not be speaking with them. They are, uh, they are very ethical. And so because they're represented as an attorney, they can't talk to a client that is represented by an attorney, but he has repeatedly called them. And in fact, so much so that they have emailed me and asked me, to talk to him, to tell him to stop calling them because he, they cannot talk to him. And I did try and call him both on Friday and today to tell him to stop calling the attorney for ERATS, um, but I haven't received a call back. He should have turned that complaint over, yes. I, I, I guess if, 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 if I might, I have a couple of questions. The, the first um, is, is related to that and and under what obligation if you're a member of the group and that group is being sued under what do you have an obligation or can you just I, sit on it and if no one else would would have known i mean what, what what if we were just getting sued and no one else the only reason we knew about it is because there's there's other parties involved other defendants i mean isn't there an obligation? There, there is, there's is a, there's an obligation. And, and as I said, I mean, it, it could be detrimental to the district in the sense that if one of you is served with a lawsuit against the district and you don't tell anyone, and then the 20 days passes when you have to answer the complaint, now they have a right to go to court and get a default judgment against the school district because you failed to answer. And that has so if there happened. Is, so if there is, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but so if there is an obligation, what is our recourse to, to hold Mr. Gentilini accountable? Uh, well, I mean, your recourse would be to, um, you could pass a resolution of censure uh, disavowing his actions or, no. you know, as, as you could pass some type of resolution with respect to how he handled this. Uh, oh, come on. You know, I, I think until Mr. Gentilini can be here to talk, uh, I don't think this is appropriate conversation. Margaret, you should agree uh, with that. Director Sorkin, I have, we, I have asked Director Gentilini multiple at times on text to either turn it over to me or turn it over to Jeff the the uh, the summons he got and he 
firmly believes that we all should have got one. Well, if he okay. firmly believes, I don't think we should be talking like this, and he's not here to give his response. It's, okay? it's our fault that he's not here. It's not any of our fault that he's not here. Again, not I will... Him. Again, I will state the importance of being at meetings or notifying the board chair that you will not be at the meeting. So, so Matt asked the question. So when it, so when it comes to the fact that director Gentilini didn't turn it over and he said, has he had any conversation with anyone on the board besides me that he has, has, has had this. So nobody knows. Nobody knows about this. Polly, do you know about it? Other than the... I'd like to know how Matt knew about it. He just said before uh, that we, we knew about it. And the newspaper. He, right. Well, same with me. So Director Gentile, he didn't tell you that he got this pay packet in the paper. Or you, know what? In the, or... you know what, Bill? You're trying to pin me and entrap me to say something, and you are directly... No. Yes, you are. You, it's just so obvious. It is so obvious. Okay. Well, whatever. Okay? Well, I stand with it that I think that you should, could have another special meeting or whatever, and Mr. Gentilini, Tom, can can uh, explain himself and not other people explain things for him. I just I think this is just not fair. If it were me, I'd be very upset that this was happening now. And now you're talking about censuring somebody? Wow. You wouldn't even go there with Mr. Peterson uh, on the re last board. You wouldn't even go no, there. No, no, that, that, that was you, suggested you also... by our attorney as a potential option. No one on this board said anything about that. No, oh, but I'm saying it's been brought up now that that's a possible. You asked what kind of possible action to right. hold him responsible. You asked about what possible a action to hold him responsible, and, and she um, suggested that. So yes. now... That's been thrown out there, but you That's asked one option. You asked about holding him responsible. So, uh, responsible for what? Exactly what? Oh, What's I, the I, wrong I, that he should be censured for? I think we just heard that he had a, a, an obligation to report this to the, the district, and he failed to do that. For what reasons? I don't know. I would have liked to have heard. His reasoning tonight. That's what I'm saying. And just because he's not here, maybe he, like when I was out of town in Minneapolis for personal reasons and I couldn't be there and I got chewed up for not being at a meeting, we all have to miss meetings sometimes, okay? And so just because he's not here, Brandy. Brandy's point, it's easy enough to let someone know you aren't going to be at the meeting and it's the only. Ah. When you left, when, it's when you respectful left him for, way of dealing with the board. That's and informing fine. the board. Uh, Thank you for finding the word, Brandy, that I... Go ahead, Kelly. The fact is he's not so here. The, 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 rea the reality is, is it doesn't matter whether who, whoever is at the meeting. We still have business that we have to attend to. So if people right. are not... Then they're, they're just not at the meeting. And we still have business to attend to. This litigation is business to attend to. We're getting the update from our attorney on what has happened. We're getting the reasons or our best understanding of the delay with getting notification, it is what it is. And I, I could care less of reading any intention. I'm not reading intentions into why. I don't care. The fact is, though, that we didn't receive notification, and that is concerning. And it is concerning to me that that our one of our school board members independently is contacting an attorney that is currently attempting to sue our district. That's a pretty big concern that I have. So let's get back to not even assuming intentions, the, the reality of what we know today, please. And exactly, Kelly, you, so. exactly. Let's get down to that business. Absolutely. So, so Margaret, when does the, when do we, what, what, how do we officially, when does our district officially get served? When Director Gentilini turns that packet over? Or, no, or when, when, because we got board members that don't know about it. Right. So you're officially served when they hand any school board member the lawsuit. So once it was in Mr. Gentile, Director Gentile's hands, the school board was, the school district was served. So when does, when does the clock start? When he, whenever he got that. Okay. The moment he got it, that's when the clock starts. 
And when, so, did the, and when did the public in the school district know about it? The same as me when we when we uh, heard that that announcement. Okay, right then and there. What announcement was that in the paper? When we heard the announcement that that ERATS was suing. Okay, so from that point on, we all knew, right? And then I don't know, Margaret, when you. You got your copy. Did you go and call the, their attorney and get a copy then once once it was known to the public? I right. had when, made I got well, a when call was this from, public announcement? I, I received a call from Bill that he had heard that the district was being sued, and so then we looked into it. Okay, well, now we know. Let's all get copies of it. But who's who's gonna who's gonna supply us with the copies? Margaret has a copy. Yep, I ha I do have a copy now. I can okay, provide so, it. So yeah, other question. Uh, go ahead, Bill. I'm just saying that when was there a public announcement other than in the paper? That was the that was it. In the paper. How did the paper? What is it? I mean, what I, what I kind of understand, what I can understand is my conversation with, you know, and I hate to throw Tom under the bus, but director Gentilini knew on Sunday, two, pri two days prior, we were being sued. And I'm like, I knew nothing about it. And then Tuesday morning, it's in the paper, I suppose, because I don't get the paper. Tom gets a packet Tuesday night. You know, so how did, how, what's really odd to me is how Tom knew Sunday he gets the packet on Tuesday, and it's in the paper on Tuesday. I think That's it was in the paper on Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? Okay, so what's the task at hand? We are having an update on a legal situation is what we added to the thing. Now, why are we talking about time? What are we, we're in a legal situation. Now, what are we supposed to be discussing? What are we going to do? Margaret, you're just updating us of, of the status, okay? So now what? I, no, I, no, 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 Polly. Polly, I want to know why Director Gentilini, who I repeatedly, I said, you know, what are, what are our options? I mean, how do we get, do, is there just one copy? Is there multiple copies? Do we have to have the official copy delivered to the board? I mean, what, what is it? Is it, I mean, you know, I'm just baffled that he hasn't turned the original copy over after multiple requests by Margaret by Jeff and by me. Why is he holding on to it? And, 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 and listen, and listen, being that none of the board's member, has he shared this with any non-elected board member? That's concerning. And it's very concerning okay. that he's repeatedly calling counsel of someone who's serving us. You have to know better than to be doing that. Again, we need to hear his explanation his answer to all of these questions I, this is inappropriate. I, it's Polly I agree that we have to hear this stuff I yeah. don't think it's inappropriate to be expressing what our concerns are right now with with how this has taken place so I agree I I don't want to spend a whole lot of time of guests because we don't have those answers and only Tom's going to have those answers but okay. so we have two concerns that notice wasn't that when he was served he did not he did not communicate that to the district right away. And once people requested the documentation, that still was not given to the district. So that's one concern. And then the other concern is the communication with the ERATS attorney. So those are things that we can certainly follow with Tom on, but I mean, we're not gonna have an answer on why or what happened, but they are concerned. And I think it's okay that we're expressing that because it's relevant to the discussion right now. Okay, um, but let's not make assumptions. Okay? And, and let's not make accusations and assumptions. Let's find out. I'm not happens. saying that, but okay. I'm saying I'm trying making it okay. at all. Exactly. So now the task at hand is that we've been served. What are what are we going to do about it? What's the status, Margaret? What what about that part? So today I sent a letter asking um, council to dismiss the claim against Evelyn Gilbert. So we're going to be in communication. I'm hopeful that he realizes that his claim is really against Virginia and the joint powers entity and that he will just agree to dismiss it. I don't know if that will happen. We'll see hopefully this week. If that does not happen, he's filed a temporary restraining order 
which uh, is an emergency hearing. The court has scheduled a, um, a scheduling conference to occur and the court will tell us when our briefs are due for that temporary restraining order. And so if you won't dismiss it, then I'll respond to the briefs. We'll have an argument on it. I'll seek dismissal from the court at that point. Margaret, I, I think you, you referred to it before as a temporary injunction. Is that the same as a temporary restraining order or what is the temporary injunction for? So that's to stop Virginia, the Joint Powers Board and Evelyn Gilbert, since you're named here, from doing anything with the bus garage, from taking any action until there is a resolution on the whole issue. And the judge has not issued that, correct? That's the request from the plaintiff. Right. They filed the papers for that to happen. And the court hasn't even told us what our schedule is for responding to that. But he could um, set a really expedited schedule because that's what an injunction is. He could say, you know, you have three, four days to respond, and then I'll have the hearing on the fifth day. Sometimes on really critical issues, you get it that night and you literally have to respond verbally the next day. You don't even have enough time to do a brief. This case isn't that much of a emergency that the court required us to do that. Thing. Well, not that much, but you hold off construction very much longer and the whole schedule, it puts the whole schedule at risk. So before Evelyn Gilbert was named in this, Virginia had already set up a mediation. They are also, there's also the issue of eminent domain where they're trying to take over that. So there is a mediation scheduled with ERATS. I think it's uh, towards the end of May, May 22nd, May 26th. The plaintiff's counsel told me that today. I'm hopeful that on behalf of Eveleth Gilbert, I won't have to attend that because as I said, there's no claim against Eveleth Gilbert. There's no reason for you to pay attorney's fees for me to attend that. So I am hopeful that they will just dismiss Eveleth Gilbert, but they do have a mediation scheduled as well. Uh, Margaret, I have a quick question. So if they do not dismiss it and we end up going through this, if the judge recognizes that Evelyn Gilbert, in fact, is not necessarily a party to this, would there be any compensation for your fees on, on behalf of ERAT's responsibility to pay for that? No. Okay. That's unfortunate. Thank you. But, yeah. Okay, Margaret, let me you, just... Greg, did you say that you thought that the <clears throat> Joint Powers Board might be culpable? I thought you just might have said that a minute ago. I don't know that they're culpable, but there's a there's a viable claim that's being asserted. There's there's no claim there's no viable claim against Evelyn Gilbert. Yeah, but there might be against the joint powers. There's enough facts to make there's enough facts to assert a claim based upon what's listed in the complaint. That doesn't mean that there is that there's any liability. It just means that they pass the benchmark to assert enough facts to allege a claim, which they have not done with Evelyn Gilbert, in my opinion. Okay. But half of that Joint Powers Board is Evelyn Gilbert. I don't understand. It's it is it's a it's a separate legal entity. It's it's just the way that that entity is formed under the statute it allows. Uh, public entities to work together cooperatively without them being subject individually to liability for, to, for what that cooperative entity does. I'm sorry, but it seems like you're looking for an opportunity, Polly. Randy, you're out of order. You are very the board, out of order. The board chair can make that call, but it needs to be said. So, I am just, I'm just trying so, to so on this on this Margaret or to the board had I had I received that letter the summons from Tom 
because he said he received something, but until I was going to inform the board, as soon as I had it in hand, I would have turned it over to Jeff, and Jeff would have told the board at that point. So you can say that I knew about it. I knew about it, yes and no. I knew about from what Tom told me, and I knew about what I heard in the paper, but I had not physically had the summons in my hand, so I could not inform the board that it was actually true. You know what I'm saying? So I just want the board to know that the reason I did not inform anybody on the board is because I had not received the original copy that Tom Gentilini, because of because he had not turned it over to me, I couldn't make that claim that we were being sued so i just want the board to know okay and we can't believe everything we see in here that's correct so any other question any other discussion on this margaret you got any more discussion for no. us any no i'll update you as it goes along i i hope they're reasonable and they just dismiss Evelyn gilbert Thank you thank for you. your representation, yeah. Margaret. Yeah. Don, Thanks you got Margaret. Oh. All right, thank you. You got something to say, John? Thanks, Margaret. All right, thanks. Okay. All righty, 12.0 old business. There is none. 13.0 administrative report and information. I just got a couple, Bye, things, couple of things to share with you. I'll be... Uh, relatively quick here i sent uh the email this morning a couple documents um <clears throat> and and again i'm not going to ask you to do anything tonight i just i want to put this in front of you and and this is another conversation that will be coming fast and furious at you so um just so you're all aware three years ago we decided to lease ipads for all of our students we're a one-to-one -one school and that lease that final lease payment was made this year and we currently own them we because we we opted for the um one dollar purchase option which at the end of the lease for one dollar we get to keep all of them under normal circumstances we would we would probably get a fourth year out of those things um, but right now we are we've been informed that there's um, probably some uh, federal money coming toward the state well there is federal money that came into the state but they're they're working on what that's going to be used for and most people that we have talked to believe that it's going to be for reimbursement for distance learning expenses and one of those expenses could be ipads so we want to be in a position where we are ready when that comes um, if we have the opportunity to refresh our fleet um, we want to do that so the information that i sent you today you can go through um, but basically in a nutshell um, and virginia's in the same boat you'll you'll see both evels gilbert and virginia in this document um, we both bought fifth generation ipads um, in 2017 for both districts for both districts we're looking at about 2600 new iPads um, as well as new laptops for all of our staff so that would all go into the lease payment um, we are currently paying hundred and six thousand dollars a year and Virginia is paying hundred and thirty three thousand dollars a year so this would be uh, depending on what option we took um, looking at our best option would be I didn't do it I swear to God they aren't coming here um, our, our best option would be to have a balloon payment in year one if that was the if we were able to get the uh, federal money and then year two and three would be about similar to what we're currently paying so it wouldn't be a uh, any uh, type of budget issue for us it would be budget neutral so and then on the other sheet that I I sent out is the actual quote so you can see um, 
that it would we would be looking at the, the 12.2 inch iPad which is Apple Pencil compatible which ours are not currently um, along with cases and you can see here the, the 13 inch MacBook Airs would be the the new staff units for a grand total of almost a million dollars that would be the list price but we would lease those like I said for the prices you saw before so anyway I, I this is gonna come up uh, again in the next couple meetings so I just I wanted to introduce it to you so that you're aware that we're looking at this and, and what the possibility is and why we're looking at it so does anyone have any questions that's all I have mr. chair I have none I have no questions. Anybody, any other board member have any questions? But you know, maybe I will add a question. Jeff, what, what, where do these old pads go to die? Then? Where do they go? What's that? Can people buy them? I know that you... Oh. What, what, what happens to the iPad when they're no longer fit for service? Um, well, we we have. The, the last fleet we had, we... There are buyback companies out there that they, they buy up uh, bulk used units, and I'm sure they resell them for more than what they bought them for. Um, our current fleet um, is worth about $150,000 to a buyback company. So we would that would be my recommendation is that we would sell them back because we don't have any use for them at that point. Okay. All right, very good. Uh, any other discussion? On that okay moving along to board member topics I will Kelly you can call the people out call them out for board member topics yeah. okay. director you on I just like to say I think um, the distance learning is going really well too. my eighth grader I you know the the amount of work he's getting I think uh, seems about right for what he can handle at home and uh, I think it's going really well. So good job by everybody. Director Schoberg. Um, I, I really don't have anything tonight. Thank you. Director Lodiger. I just want to echo what Matt said. I think that um, for my kids as well, things have gone smoothly and they don't seem overwhelmed by work um and also we have um younger nieces and nephews that are in the elementary school age group and things seem to or sound to be going really well with them as well i like to see the art projects and things that kids are doing those are pretty cool um, a lot of fun seeing those so just thank you to everybody you know coming together during this time whether it's teachers figuring out a new way of teaching kids through distance learning or um, community members coming together and, and trying to do what they can do to help out the seniors and make their end of their school years here at Evelyn Gilbert um, the best that they can be under the situation um, to, you know, businesses pitching in and just thank you to everybody. It's, it hasn't been easy and, and I agree the mental health of kids and even adults during this time can be um, difficult, you know, social distancing. So just thank you to everybody and stay strong. Yeah, that was Mr. Yuhan that you were echoing, by the way. Oh, sorry. It's I'll take Yuhan. credit for it. <laughs> thank you. Um, Director Sather, myself, I don't have much other than it's nice to I know the graduation stuff is an ideal and it's not necessarily what we look for when you're anticipating your graduation but um, I really think that there's been a lot of creativity going in trying to find a solution and I just thank all of our um, administration and teachers and everyone involved with that along with the parents and likely students and everything too. Director Addy. I would just like to say that maybe when this all comes to a settle, this all, this whole COVID thing, that it would be a great gesture to actually have a gradu actual graduation ceremony for these kids. You know, the virtual thing is, yeah, that's cool. 
it's, it works. It'll work. You know, I mean, it's what we got to do. But uh, having an actual graduation ceremony, be it outside on the football field or something, I just, it just seems so odd that they're not going to, that the group's not, it's not going to be together and they're not going to graduate together. So I would just think it would be, like I said, a good gesture if you, once this all settles down, you throw up a stage on a Saturday and you invite them all in and pull them back. You know, everybody wear a mask. You're not allowed to have a mask on and, you know, and everybody, everybody goes across the stage. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I think it's, that'd be, you know, that'd be just my thoughts. But at that, I'm done. Okay. Director Sorkin. Again. Director Sorkin. One more time. Director Sorkin. Okay. Director Sorkin, Director Genelini is absent, so okay. that is it. 15.0, can I get a motion to, can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll move. I will second. All Thanks, in favor? Oh, we have to roll call to adjourn? No. We have it, back, no. Okay, all right. Good night, Thank everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, teachers. Thank you. Good day tomorrow. Right. got to say it tomorrow. Get out and day vote. Day oh, yes. Yeah, get out and vote. Get out and vote. Yes.